uh, in that. Now, you, you brought up a good point about the Harlem Renaissance, right? So from what I gather about this city called Atlanta, you know, apparently... We took the mantle. <laughs> yes. So, you know, but is, is Atlanta... Even Mace left Harlem. <laughs> You know, you know, is, 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 it, is, it, is it true that Atlanta is like the, the, the mecca of black excellence or is, is it not true? Y'all got to tell me from your mouth because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a Dallas, Texas guy. You know what I mean? And so, you know, it, is Atlanta all it's cracked up to be in regards to the black excellence? It, it is to me as a transplant. Uh, so I'm from Baltimore and uh, I've not seen uh, this level of black entrepreneurship anywhere in the country. Uh, Atlanta leads in black home ownership uh, anywhere else in the country. When you look at uh, uh, the, the underbelly of the Atlanta University Center uh, and what that produced from Clark, Morehouse, Mars Brown, Spelman, uh, it rivals second to none. Um, sometimes in Atlanta, I'll go in a restaurant attorney and see white people and I'm in shock because I forget they live here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, where are y'all visiting from? <laughs> uh, because uh, really this is, Atlanta has taken the mantle of Harlem and DC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the new chocolate city. Okay. Uh, okay. And you're seeing people do well progressively. Uh, in Baltimore, where I'm from, either you had to be a hustler or an athlete. Uh, to drive a Bentley, mm -hmm. um, to live in a gated community. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, you know, how, how in the world are you living in this house? Uh, you know, I'm selling girdles. I'm selling <laughs> hair bundles. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, the, 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 the latitude of wealth is not restricted, and it challenges uh, W.E.B. Du Bois' talented 10th, mm -hmm. uh, that those who are doing well in Atlanta are not all formally trained, uh, are not uh, with a coat of shellac, uh, as it were. You've got to really, I came here in 1989, and the draw for Atlanta at that time was HBCUs and the legacy of Dr. King. Okay. The draw for Atlanta now, and I'll yield to my attorney, is uh, reality television and Tyler Perry. Uh, that, that shifts the whole taste of the city mm -hmm. of what is the draw. Yeah. Um, so there is no line right now if the four of us uh, go to Barnes & Noble four blocks from where we're taping this, we can go in. Mm -hmm. If we go to Lennox, there's a line outside of Louis. Sure, right? yeah. <laughs> we said that the model is yeah. different, right. but the hustle is the same. Right. Uh, so you got to respect the hustle. It was in the pandemic that I had to repent to the community that the church historically has only pushed one path to success, which was college. Yeah. Uh, and that's wrong mm -hmm. uh, because there's a whole lot of people who are making it with no degree. Yeah. Uh, and I know the educator may. No, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but, I agree with that. Yeah, but I think that we've got to have a balance of Booker T and WEB. Sure, that sure. where is your trade? What is your skill set? It's plumbers making 150 right, grand. Right, right, it's right. truck drivers making 100 grand. And as Nick Rose, who went to Morehouse with me, who are temping at H and M. You know, so uh, <laughs> you got to find what is the balance and the value is not necessarily what is the letters behind your name. True. You know, uh, Muhammad Ali said, "Champions aren't made in the gym." they made in your gut uh, of what is your purpose, what is your determination, uh, and what are you really fighting for? And Atlanta proves that. Yeah. Um, that if you come here, everybody comes to Atlanta for witness protection. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, w I couldn't be nothing at home. <laughs> so I come to Atlanta and I'm a star. So uh, Atlanta really is that incubator, go south young man. Yeah. Uh, and so I, th I think that's really the, the spirit of the city. Yeah. I like that. It's crazy because when I moved out here, I didn't, I didn't know that that was going to be Atlanta. I didn't know what I was getting into. I wanted to be an entertainment lawyer, a sports lawyer. Um, I wanted to be in a city that was in that space. So yeah, ordinarily, L.A., go back home to New York, where I was from, but don't, can't go back there, right? Too many distractions. Um, although I love my family, mom, you know, no offense. <laughs> um, so I, I decided and I landed on Atlanta. When I came here, I realized how much it wasn't like New York. Uh, it didn't have that crab in the barrel mentality. It was... It was, it was you know, growing up in the streets was it was different. 
you know? Um, and when you came here, you saw a lot of people that wanted to work with each other, build each other, grow businesses uh, with each other. Um, and I, and, I, and it, quite frankly, it just, it, it infests the entire city of how much people want to see other black people win. Yeah. And, and I think it's amazing, um, you know? And, and you're right about the whole, you don't have to go to school. I was teaching at Booker T. Washington while I was in law school through the street law program. And I was telling a lot of the kids there now, because I represent a lot of these creatives, these content creators, these 18-year-olds that are running into millions of dollars, helping them protect that magic, mm -hmm. protect that. Um, you know, figure out what you love and what you do. Um, make it a business and find out how it could be profitable. So if you love playing video games, let's create a video game. Let's compete. Let's figure out how, you know, we can make money. Everyone doesn't have to go to college. Some things is a rite of passage. You know, you have to go to law school to be a lawyer, go to med school to be a doctor. Um, but here in Atlanta, you can create that, and those opportunities are endless, and people are here supporting each other. And that's, and that's why we're here today, right? I mean, like, literally, I support your brand. I love it, you know? So, you know, I love Atlanta. I don't see myself moving anywhere anytime soon. I, <laughs> um, I have all my friends in New York moving here to Atlanta. I mean, a lot of people's moving here, so slow down a little bit, but, right. um, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, man, Atlanta is the new black Hollywood. Content creation. I mean, we're yeah. fully open right now, despite COVID. Yeah. I know, you know, COVID <laughs> compliance is here, though. Don't get it twisted. Um, but we're, you know, it's going to continue to be the mecca of everything that is grown at everything that is black excellence. So yeah, for sure. You know. I, I think I agree with everything that everyone said. And there's an organization here in Atlanta called Atlanta Influences Everything, and it's it's simple. It does. Atlanta influences everything, and you can even say, you know, Black Atlanta influences everything. We are you know, the trendsetters here, when you think about the entertainment industry and music, you've gotta be planted here in Atlanta to get the Atlanta support for your music, whatever to take off, right? When you think about the restaurant industry, there's so many different places that are opening up here. You know, black chefs and, you know, restaurateurs are opening up here. The tech industry, right? This is a mini Silicon Valley here. The black tech industry is moving here to Atlanta. So, you know, when you talk about the influence that the city has and the, the impact that black people are making, it's just, it's ridiculous.